Hello, guys. So here we are back with the third session on uh, these uh, hard questions on the SAT suite, right? So the digital SAT. So we are basically solving the official questions. So this one is saying, so as before, uh, before you solve a particular question, just pause the video, solve it yourself, and then look at the solution. All right. So in this one, it's saying that these two equations are a pair of perpendicular lines. Which of the following also represents a pair of perpendicular lines? Okay, so let us try that out. First, let's figure out the slope of these lines because we know that in perpendicular lines, the product of slopes is negative one, right? So here, if we look at this, the slope, we'll have seven uh, y equals negative five x plus one. So y would be negative five over seven x plus one over seven. That means here the slope is negative five by seven. Okay. Now do the same thing here. We'll have b y equals minus a x plus one. So y would be negative a over b x plus one over b. So if this m one, let's say this is m two, which is negative a over b. Their product will be minus one. So if you multiply, the negatives will cancel out. You will have five a over seven b equals minus one. In other words, a over b should be negative seven by five. So now what we have to do is in which of the following options do we have the same a over b ratio to be minus seven by five? That's all we need to check. So we'll just quickly do this now. Now that we know how to proceed for the slope. So for the first line here, we'll have seven y equals negative 10 x, right? So y would be negative 10 over seven x plus one over seven. So here you have a negative 10 by seven. And here we have two b y equals a x. So y would be a over two b times x plus something. We have to check whether this product is negative or not. But as you can see, A over B is a negative quantity. So that means this is negative and this is already negative. Their product cannot be negative again, right? So that means this is definitely not the correct answer because if the product is not negative, then there is no question of being negative one. So any equation of this format where like you have a plus connecting X and Y on the first one and minus for the x and y in the second one can be safely ignored. Just like, for example, this one again, same type. Okay, one of them is a negative sign, the other has a positive sign. Let's just check. So here, the first one would have seven y equals five x. So y would be five over seven x plus something. So that's the slope here. And the second line would be b y is negative a x. So it would be negative a over b times x. Okay, something like this, plus something. Again, A over B being negative, so negative A over B is positive. So positive times positive cannot be a minus one, right? So this is also, out. okay. So the answer has to be one of these two. So if I, let's say, look at this one here, seven Y equals negative 10 X, right? So again, be Y equals negative 10 over seven X plus something. So that's your slope. And the second line here would be, y equals, so minus a over 2b, that times x plus something. Now you have to check whether this these two multiply and give you minus one or not. So if I were to multiply them, so we have negative 10 over seven multiplied with, so the negatives and the negatives will cancel out. So negative a over 2b, okay, so that is gone. And this two and the 10 cancel with the five. So you have five over seven times a over b. But A over B is negative seven by five, right? So you have five over seven times negative seven over five. So that's minus one, that's matching, right? So that means these two lines are definitely perpendicular to each other. So answer is option B. Uh, my bad. Yeah, answer is option B. Okay, I hope this is clear. So the idea is to first set up the relationship between A and B and then check which of the following satisfies that, okay? Let's go to the next one. 
So it says a uh, business owner plans uh, plans to purchase the same model of chair for each of the 81 employees. The budget is 14,000, which includes a 7% sales tax. So that means 14,000 is 107% of the actual price. So they're saying which of the pos which of the following is closest to the maximum possible price per chair before sales tax that the business owner could pay, right? So this 14,000 is basically 107%. Then the actual price of all those chairs, all those 81 chairs, right? For those 81 employees would be 14000 divided by 1.07. So feel free to use the calculator. I'm just using that. So what we have is 14,000 divided by 1.07. So that is 13084. And that's the price for 81 chairs. So each would therefore be this same thing divided by 81. If you divide that, you get dollars 161.53. That means your Five three something. So the price of the chair maximum can be option B. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. So it says are the school fair students can win color tokens um, that are worth different number of points. G number of green tokens, R number of red tokens. So G and R are how many tokens, right? But then 380 is the number of points. So that means this would be also points. And this would be also points. Points plus points should be points, right? To keep it consistent. So that means what? If there are G tokens and you have multiplied with 5 to calculate the points, it's obvious that 5 points per green token you have. So a green token is worth 5 points. And similarly, a red token is worth 45 points. So they are saying how many more points? So the difference is basically 40 points. So that's your answer. Right, let's go to the next one. Okay, a store sells, uh, store A sells uh, raspberries for this and blackberries for this, B sells for this, okay. A certain purchase of Raspberries and black, uh, blackberries would cost this at A or this at B. So the same combination, right? So if you assume R raspberries and B blackberries, from store A, it is 5.5 R plus 3B is 37. And from the second one, uh, raspberries cost now 6.5 R and blackberries is 8 B. And that costs you 66. They're asking how many blackberries are there. So we need to solve for these two, right? So one way you can just plug in values and cross check. Or you can just go and solve them simultaneously. So if you want to uh, solve it, it's going to be a little long calculation because we need to get rid of the R. So we'll need to multiply the first equation with 65, the second one with 55, or you can just multiply with like uh, 13 and uh, five that way. But I mean, it, it it's uh, not something that you, 13 and 11, sorry, but it's not something that you want to do, right? It's a lot of calculation. So it's better you just plug in these values for B and check where the R value comes out to be the same. So if I plug in B as four, so then that's four three is a 12, right? So 12 goes that side. So 37 minus 12 is 25. So R comes out to be 25 upon 5.5 here. And here it comes out to be 8B. So B is four there, right? So 32, if I subtract 32 from 66, that would be 34 over 6.5, which uh, doesn't look likely to be the same value, right? Though it's maybe close. But then 34 on, on top and uh, 13 below, this is 5 on top, 11 below, doesn't look the same. So most likely not. Let's try with 5. So if I try with 5, then what are we going to get? So if I plug in 5, 15, so that means 37 minus 15. So that's uh, 22, right? 
So 22 over 5.5, okay, that's a nice value, 4. And here if I plug in 5, then it's 40. So 26 over 6.5. And the good thing is that's also 4. So that's fine. So that means B as 5 satisfies. So that's your answer. Okay. So just because you have got a pair of equations does not mean you start just solving. Okay. So just see, maybe solving would take up longer time. Maybe plugging in is a better option here. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Yep, so it says uh, some values of x are there and some fx values are there for the linear function. That's very important. It's not linear, it's linear, not quadratic or anything else. But they're saying what's the x-intercept means if y is zero, what is x? All right, so this is the y. So if y is zero, what is x? So as you can see, whenever it decreases by three, this value here increases by one, right? A three decrease is a one increase. So to make this zero, I have to decrease by 12, which is four times, right? Like four times. That means we have to increase here four times as well. So plus four. So minus eight plus four is minus four. So minus four, y is zero, that's your answer. So this is the fastest you can do. The other way obviously is to uh, figure out what's the slope from any two of the points. And then uh, use this as an unknown like a, uh, k comma zero and then uh, use that to find out the slope at some other point again and equate the slopes. But then that's going to take you some time, right? We have discussed that method in previous uh, questions as well. But here it makes much more sense to use this nice little property that we can see. So a uh, three decrease makes x increase by one. So a 12 decrease would make x increase by four. So that's the answer. Minus eight plus four is minus four, minus four comma zero. Let's go to the next one. Ken's working this summer as a part of a crew. He earned $8 for, per hour for the first 10 hours. Okay, so 10 hours, $8, you already have 80. Okay, 10 hours gone. Because of his performance, he's uh, raised his salary to $10 per hour for the rest of the week. So now he's earning $10 per hour, okay? Ken saves 90% of his earnings from each week. So if I, let's say, assume that H hours here, so that means he's going to get 10 H as the salary there, okay, earnings. And of this total, whatever his total earnings were, he saved 90%. So 90% of 80 plus 10 H, what is it saying? What's the least number of hours he must work for the rest of the week to save at least 270? So that means this is greater than or equal to 270. So this becomes 0. 0.9 times 80 plus 10 H is greater than or equal to 270. So 80 plus 10 H is greater than or equal to 300, right? You divide 270 by 0. 0.9. So 270 over 0. 0.9, let's we'll just do it here. 270 over 0. 0.9 is 300. So we get that 300. Take the 8 that side, so 10 H is greater than or equal to 220. So H is greater than or equal to 22. So the least number of hours you must work is 22 hours. So that's your option C. All right. Alternatively, you could have just said that, okay, 90% of the earnings is uh, 270. So the total earnings is 300. But you already have earned uh, $80, right? So your remaining earnings is uh, $220. And the $220 is basically $10 per hour, right? So how many hours did you work? So $22. All right. It's not asking for the total number of hours. It's just what asking you for the remaining week. So that's just $22. We don't need to add those 10 initially. All right. Next. To earn money for college, uh, this guy works uh, two part-time jobs. Uh, she earns ten dollars for working uh working a job A, so ten dollars per hour. And twenty dollars here. All right, in one week you earn a total of S dollars for working at the two part time jobs. The graph represents all possible combinations of the number of hours that she could have worked for the at the two jobs to earn the same S dollars. Okay, so all of them have the same S dollars. So what is the value of S? You can see very clearly that this is 16. So that means if you had only worked at job A, you would have got 16 times 10. That would be $160. That must be the same as S because 
everything on this line is at s dollars right so that's 160 you could have taken this one also there's five six seven eight eight times 20 is also 160 so whichever way you look at it it's going to be 160 dollars so that's your answer all right next so this one says that uh, the point with coordinates d comma four means y value is four so that's y is four means comes here and there is some weird value in between we don't know what it is what's the value of d so we need to figure out that value only all of them are around that three mark right all of them are around that three mark so we can't really use options here so we need to solve so what do we do we pick the two points the y-intercept is x is zero y is seven the x-intercept is x is eight y is zero and let us say the point that we need was d comma four the slopes must be equal so what's the slope here seven minus zero by zero minus eight is equal to seven minus four over zero minus d so that gets us d equal to the so negative cancels out right so d equals 24 over 7 and that would be option c all right simple equate the slope get the point okay so whenever two points are there and you need a value of a third point just equate the slope that's usually the easiest way to get it done 